Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Again, this is Chris here. This time, I am in uh, Pendleton, Oregon. I'm here to pick up uh, this Trail King trailer. Uh, this is a contractor construction heavy haul trailer with dually, three axle duallys, rated probably for quite a bit. I'm kind of curious what its capacity is. Well, anyway, I'm here in Pendleton, and it's uh, about 10 uh, p.m., 9 p.m. Everything is frozen, just to let you know. Here, this ice frozen on every place. It's about 20 degrees outside. Um, you know, I checked all these tires real hard. With I thumped them with a hammer and uh, looked over the uh, axles themselves. The axles could use some work, but uh, this is a recovery, so it appears that the uh, axles are movable or spinning because um, uh, it was uh, moved here. This particular one, it's leaking, the seal it is. Uh, uh, it's got, you know, independent airbags over there that are all ready to go. It looks like they're holding out air. We're gonna put some air in it to see how it works. All tires seem to be inflated. Uh, two inside ones on the opposite side seem to be a little low, um, but the trailer otherwise so far so looks good. We'll see how the landing gear works. Um, this is a uh, hydraulic trailer. As you can see, the lines here, by the way, the, the uh, <laughs> airlines are frozen, so we're gonna heat those up before we connect anything. Hopefully electrical and lights work as well. Uh, this is number 263973, trailer number 263973. And we're gonna look at the inspection sticker and the um, VIN number. I think it's in the front, but I'm just looking here for uh, particulars. Um, if we can find it anywhere else. Uh, we've got the hydraulic cover plate here for the mechanicals uh, open. There's also an oversized, I thought there was an oversized sign that is not here now. So I'm assuming it was removed. Uh, the initial pictures uh, identified an oversized sign and there isn't. Uh, on separate note, this was where the VIN number would normally go and uh, we're gonna look for another VIN number plate but we're gonna try first to connect this trailer to see what uh, the lights look like and how the airlines and everything else connects and works uh, before we check everything else out there is some marker light issues a hole in the frame here that looks like to be serviced due to rust uh, the metal itself seems to be a little corroded on the frame on that side and there's some more corrosion down further back uh, we'll see how the landing gear works as well uh, again the, the bed is all frozen uh, it's a wood bed with some holes in the middle uh, hopefully not too bad um, yeah We'll see, we'll, uh, the dovetail itself, it's uh, supposedly hydraulic, so hopefully it stays put. Um, we're not gonna mess with that at all, but uh, let me connect it, see what it does, and uh, how the lights look, and how the airlines are going to hold up. And then we'll test the tires.
connected, we're going to raise the landing gear and uh, get the legs off the ground. So this is the process but in the middle of the night in 20 degrees weather. It's not necessarily fun, but need it to be done. Once the landing gears are up, which they could go up a little higher, as you can see here. Then we can, oh, well, that's about it. And so landing gears are up. Uh, the, looks like the landing handle, for so the landing gear handle, normally sits in a position here, except it's not reachable. We are connected, the fifth wheel is uh, the jaws are, are clamped. We got clearance. Uh, now we're going to try to warm up the airlines before we plug so them. We, we didn't have to do anything with the airlines other than wipe them down. The rubber seals are still there. The holes were not frozen. So we got the emergency line right here and the uh, service line right here. Uh, we're going to try to connect them now. It didn't need to be thawed out. The electrical line is right here and these are the hydraulics. So now that we got the airlines connected, uh, you can see here, this line is connected and that line is connected. How do you know which is which? Because, you know, the coupling devices are both painted red, right? So this, this coupling device is red. That coupling device is red as well. And so how do you know? Well, normally, on the right side, close to the driver's side, it's always the emergency line, which is the red one, and the service one being on the on the passenger side. So this is the blue one. If you check on other trailers, that's exactly the sequence. On the right, you'll find the emergency. On the left, or the passenger side, you'll find the service. Another thing is this electrical line, or the seven-way plug, is missing the flip, or the closing lid uh, it's damaged and it looks like they made uh, a bungee cord to work so we attached a bungee, bungee cord to the electrical line so it keeps it together so it does not pop out of the socket and uh, it looks like that's what was done before so we just kind of went with that and uh, otherwise the winch itself is intact we're not going to mess with that the trailer is frozen we're going to try to put air in it, see how the airbags uh, 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 function, and uh, if the lights, we're going to walk the uh, perimeter, do a pre-trip on it, on the rest of it. So it looks like we got marker lights. The front lights obviously are, are operational. You know, I've got my work light back here lighting up the neighborhood. But uh, yeah, we got marker lights working on the trailer, and uh, we also have it looks to be like tail lights operational so we got definitely tail lights which is good uh we're gonna have to keep uh get, get going here before the whole road freezes over uh but uh yeah we got marking lights which is good the tail lights are working we're gonna check the four ways and the brake lights as well so now we go we see our truck as the four-way Lights on, operational. Of course, my truck, the marker lights are blinking on the trailer. We're uh, checking the rear to see if we got tail lights on the back, and it looks like the four ways are operational as well. Yeah, I think at this time we're ready to roll. We're gonna try to pull the trailer out to uh, get up on the road. We are on the on-ramp from Woodpecker Truck here in Pendleton with the, uh, the trailer. We do have a slight air leak on uh, one of the airlines. We're not really certain if it's just uh, something quickly fixed, they need to be fixed or what. We're going to try to fix that. But as you can hear, the air escaping, there is airline and air pressure escaping. And it comes from the airlines going down to the, to the trailer. Not the airbags, the airbags are inflated. There's no air leak on this side. 
again we are functioning lights are functioning uh, it is a frozen trailer no license plate we've got a temporary if we need to put that on there we've also got our, our transporter plates but we do have an air leak it's not a strong air leak but it is after all an air leak and we're gonna check on that to see where the leak is coming from and then uh, see if we can fix it and it's Chris again you guys so we've replaced the glad hand uh, washer or a rubber uh, seal on the emergency brake and uh, otherwise the air is still continuing there is a line somewhere that goes inside this chamber inside this wall of the uh, unit that goes to the airbags all all the way back and that line it's inaccessible unaccessible that would be the more word right word for us to to reach it begins here at the glad hands and it continues obviously through the trailer through the frame underneath here these lines as you can see and but it's directly underneath the fifth wheel there's a leak right underneath the fifth wheel and one of the lines that goes back to the uh, airbags uh, for reinforcement we're not going to be able to fix that on the road so we're going to keep on going the leak is uh, slightly noticeable and on the pressure on the instrument cluster let's take a look see what it looks like over here we do have an abs light as you can see and uh you know our governor and our compressors building it up so we can manage to make it work but the abs light is on uh and obviously that would be a concern if we have large mountains to cross otherwise we're going to try to play it by ear make it over to uh, pilot trucks i'll take another look at it and see if we can uh, get it configured so that it's safely uh, transported on the road we got to make this 300 mile journey um, at least with an air leak at this moment so we're on the road at this moment uh, heading 84 westbound uh, the cloud has moved in a fog a heavy fog uh, which suggests there's moisture in the in the air as well as on the ground the temperature is about 22 degrees 25 degrees 22 to 25 depending where you're, you're at my uh, instrument cluster says it's, I'm in the 20s um, and uh, it's slick it's slick going down these uh, hills there's not a lot of hills so we didn't get all the way to the cabbage hill but in Pendleton there are a few hills that said I do have an ABS uh, ABS light on I am monitoring my airlines and I do feel the trailer uh, or I can hear the trailer as soon as I open the window the air escaping so that means that we have a loss of air uh, we're traveling at a 45 mile hour an hour with our four ways on uh, going down the hills um, more, more closer to 50 mile an hour but I'm still maintaining four ways blinking lights and also uh, keeping an eye out for the ice that's in front of me uh, to safely navigate back towards at least uh, west side and then make my way up north but I, our first attempt is to identify this leak this airline leak and uh, see if we can resolve it on the uh, on the route um, as we travel our way over into Washington State Again, just to say we're traveling at a safe speed of 45 between 45 and 50 miles an hour with our four ways on just because the inside tires we don't want those to blow out on us because they're very close to the airbags the inside airbags would uh, rip apart if those tires uh, come loose for some reason so we're gonna try to make this travel at a very 300 miles at a very low rate of speed uh, you know as, uh, as as fast as we can make it over there but uh, we We'd, we'd rather be safe than sorry. And again, just to clarify, the shipper has confirmed that this particular transport uh, is a, a tow, rather, or more of a recovery, rather than a transportation, considering the defective or out-of-service trailer condition. Um, we are going to bypass most of the scale inspection requirements, and, uh, well, all of them, that is, and then we uh, are also in uh, in uh, 
in talks with our towing department with the record just in case this uh, vehicle or this trailer becomes defective on the right on the roadway and it cannot be uh, completed the, the transfer or delivery or the tow will not be uh, completed unless um, let's cross our fingers and uh, hope that uh, all things uh, go as planned the tires will hold the airlines will hold and uh, the lights including the coupling device will hold uh, as 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 uh, hoped and uh, uh, plan to, to to do so so thank you for watching we'll keep you updated uh, this is one of those recoveries in the middle or beginning of the winter that uh, uh, generally it's done with a large wrecker uh, we're occupying uh, or transporting or towing this particular unit with a semi that's designed for a wrecker it has a a number of options. He's got a, a, a fifth wheel hitch and a record tow option with chains and uh, uh, boom. Uh, however, this particular trailer does not just yet require a record service. Um, the um, conditions of a tow versus a transport are pretty simple. One vehicle is out of service, is defective, and that's the case here. Uh, another vehicle is roadworthy and actually DOT inspected. That's not the case here. So this is a tow rather than a transport. That's usually how our services. If we find or we recover a vehicle on the road itself, that would be a, a tow. The, the difference between the two is pretty simple. One vehicle is either damaged or defective. It's out of service. The other one, and I'm saying vehicles referring to the trailers or the equipment we pull. The other one would be a roadworthy DOT inspected lights, electrical, uh, airlines, hydraulics, brakes, all those operational by uh, DOT standards. I am not sure the slack adjusters uh, are catching well uh, or adjusted properly on these brakes. We've been, we have tested the brakes and the trailer brakes. They do grip and hold independently from the tractor. So that's good. The airlines seem to be, um, well, holding the air. Uh, however, it, you know, it, it is unclear. I would not be taking this vehicle on a uh, large downgrade of 6% or, 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 or for long periods of time, only because it, it is unknown of the airlines and the loss of air. Uh, which it seems to be affecting my truck's compressor quite a bit. The compressor is trying to match up or catch up or build up air as the air is, is escaping. So whatever line we have leaking air in the, uh, in the trailer, it is for sure located between the frames under between the fifth wheel and under the the upper deck side that it's unreachable the importance when towing a vehicle like this of watching the instrument cluster is number one on everybody's uh, concern so it is very important to watch your airlines it is very important to watch uh, your instrument clusters, especially when towing a defective vehicle. The reason for that is at any fraction of a second, that line can burst and lose complete uh, power to the, um, to the uh, or completely exhaust all the uh, air from inside uh, the, the uh, charging system and lock the brakes on the trailer, causing the trailer to skid and uh, eventually jackknife. Uh, that is a, a major concern, and obviously that's why we're towing this vehicle and paying close attention to the lines and being at always being ready to react and slow down. And and uh, that's why we're, we're we're driving slower than normal traffic. And um, it's going to take a little bit of time to get to our destination, but we will make it there safe.
Okay, so we made her over to a truck stop here in uh, near Pendleton. Uh, we're continuously monitoring the condition of this trailer. Of course, the light's still operational. The the uh, seven-way plug is still in place. Uh, we double-checked on the tires and the rims and the uh, leaking hob itself. Uh, the inside tires on the front and the center inside tires are a little low uh, as far as pressure itself. The outside tires seem to be okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is a you know, well-used trailer. It's been, uh, you know, uh, used for a while, and uh, you know, it needs a little service, a little TLC. But it should do the trick for what it is. Hopefully, the dovetail hydraulics work as well. We're not going to be operating that. Um, but uh, yeah, that said, this is the uh, one of the cheaper trailers that you can find hauling excavators and machinery. Uh, we've used these guys before. We, we have uh, hauled uh, various uh, machinery on it and various equipment that uh, is specifically uh, best to be for this particular tri type of trailer, meaning that any other trailer will not do it other than a low boy. And the cost uh, with having or owning a low boy versus a road king uh, or trail king uh, dovetail. Uh, and when I say dovetail, I mean a trailer that has the rear, you know, like a bird dove, has the rear hydraulically uh, lifting and lowering for the purpose of landing gear. So you can drive a caterpillar or an excavator or a uh, you know some heavy machinery up onto the, the deck the other the other nice thing about this particular trailer it's got three sets of dualies uh, on both sides so six sets of dualies on both sides so two four six eight ten twelve wheels on the back as uh as counterweight or weight to distribute the weight that you're putting on top of the trailer so this is a heavy duty trailer designed for heavy duty machinery and equipment that require heavy 20, 30, 40,000 pounds per axle, maybe even 50,000 pounds on an axle. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, we have arrived here at Ritchie Brothers in Vancouver, in uh, Chehalis, Washington, with this fine machine here, this trailer. Uh, this is uh, the dovetail. Uh, Trail King. It is about six in the morning. It's a little bit after six, and um, unfortunately, these folks, these nice folks, Richie Brothers, Shehalis, don't open until about 8 a.m. So there's really not a place to park this machine uh, anywhere isolated, uh, other than a place that would block traffic. So it appears that we got to sit with it the rest of the day until 8 a.m. and hopefully make the full delivery a little bit later on. Uh, as we indicated previously, the unit has some marker light damage, frame damage, some rust, corrosion. It has for sure an air leak on the from the glad hands on through the frame underneath the fifth wheel an air leak that's losing air in the line somewhere between the charging system and of course it's got the inner side inner inside tires on the dualies on the passenger side that are deflated otherwise uh, the deck needs some service and some work but the uh, rear tail lights and the marker lights are functioning. It, it is unknown how the dovetail hydraulics work, but uh, that is out of our scope of uh, uh, use at this moment. We haven't tested, we haven't uh, done any of that. We have just towed it to this facility, Ritchie Brothers. And now we are here waiting on them to approve and to receive this unit.
now that we've arrived at uh, Chehalis, we're gonna be disconnecting the trailer and leaving it behind. And this is the uh, Ritchie Brothers yard in Chehalis, Washington. This is the auction yard. All these items are being sold at an auction. They have a number of trailers and equipment. This trailer will be one of those. It's uh, now being dropped off. So we're gonna disconnect landing gear. Or we already did a lot of the landing gear. temperature here is a lot warmer than it is in Pendleton. No snow or ice. However, it is still about 40, 50 degrees right now. And so now that we've got it disconnected, we're going to disconnect the hitch which we just did. We disconnected the airlines, put them back in the truck, and the next step is disconnecting and pulling out. <laughs> 